again. Um, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, I started to build these uh, Shaker-style uh, doors for under the stairs. Um, part one came out just over a couple of weeks ago, and to be honest, it's not been the build. It's been the mission to uh, rid the world of gloss paint. I am trying to de-gloss paint the house um, and I'm on a bit of a tight timeline because in a couple of weeks we're getting new carpet on the landing and the hallway and stuff so uh, it's taken me about nine or ten days to strip the um, uh, to strip the stairwell so it's I'm on a bit of a tight timeline so that's pretty much taken over my life at the moment in between doing that uh, I have actually got round to finishing and completing uh, 10 minute workshop style uh, shaker doors. Now, I, I keep forgetting to mention this, but um, I have set up a Facebook page. I am now a sort of immersing myself in the world of social media. And I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, if you want to maybe follow us or add or whatever it is you do, uh, I do put little updates up and little quick videos and where I'm up to. Um, and also um, on Instagram, um, uh, Pam posts some pictures and stuff as well on, on those updates so links to all that kind of stuff is in the description down below so we finally got around to finishing it uh, very happy with the finished uh, product I've just got one or two little, little bits and pieces to do I've just got to sand down the filler on the top there and paint over that with the satin wood paint not gloss uh, take care and hopefully uh, once the deglossing and the satin wood uh, application is finished, I will see you soon. Take care now. Thank you. I've decided to do something a little different in the production of this video in trying out a voiceover for the first time. It's just in response to a couple of people saying the, the pop-ups that I normally do are getting quite a little bit more detailed and I totally agree with them. So it's maybe distracting a little bit from the actual video itself. Just let me know what you think in the comments section whether you actually like the voiceover or you prefer the pop-ups or you may be liking the combination of the two. Now, the stands I got there, I actually just got from Rutland's recently. It was the first time I'd actually opened them up, so they were a little bit stiff. And I'm sanding down the doors using 240 grit, paying close attention really to the actual edge grain and the end grain because it was quite rough. And it was pretty much around this point that I think uh, my little friend, here he is, uh, Mr. Noodles decided to join me, who is our long-term weekend and holiday foster dog from our local rescue centre. We've been looking after this guy now for the best part of seven years. So I thought I'd give a little close-up on the guy there. So just on the inside, back to work, of the, uh, of the doors, I was using a sanding pad. Now I got them actually from the guys at amicus.uk. Uh, who are the uh, fellas who supply the hard wax oil to me, uh, but they also do a, lot, a range of abrasives as well. So, but you can use any sanding pad just to get it nice and uh, just nice and ready for the actual application of the undercoat. Last couple of jobs I did was uh, I vacuumed them down and then I used a microfiber cloth and then finally I just got a rag and put a little bit of white spirit on and gave all of the doors uh, a wipe down uh, just to degrease it and just to make sure there's no dust left on. Now, at this point, we had to go inside. It was a terrible couple of days. So there's been plenty of rain around recently. And I'm using a Leyland Acrylic Primer Undercoat. I think anything, there's going to be quite a few um, things in this video that's uh, new to me. I'll be leaving the links in the descriptions uh, if you're interested in, in any of the products. Now, what I did with this stuff was... On the actual face of things, uh, I think I gave it two coats with a very light sanding in between. But on the edge grain and the end grain, it was three coats, again with a rub down, just to give it a nice smooth finish on the edges. Then it claim, uh, came to applying the actual uh, satin wood finish on the rails and the styles. Now this time I decided to apply it with a brush uh, to get right in on the grain. And then once I'd applied that, uh, go over it with, uh, I just use a cheap sponge roller just to take away the brush strokes and it gives a really nice uniform final finish. Again, I did two coats on this. We decided that 
we wanted to paint the panel a different color and she's going to actually be a bit of a slate gray which is fine in itself i think it'll give it a nice uh, look to it but that does come with its issues and one of them is trying to get a bit of um, tape on just with the one hand uh, but I've been doing it while I've been decorating the house uh, I've kind of got me a little bit of a technique on the go it kind of works um, but maybe not as successful as I would have liked it to have been now for the grey finish uh, the emulsion on the inside uh, I've just painted that on and again just lightly go over the roller just to give it that nice uniform finish and to get away uh, to get rid of the brush marks the problem arose when obviously I took away the decorator's tape and I wasn't happy with the edges. So I decided to borrow, uh, shall we say, one of Pam's art brushes. But again, left hand, wasn't happy with it. It looked a bit of a mess. So I decided to paint the inside ridge all the way up to the top using obviously a wider brush. But what it did allow me to do was wipe along the top and it gave a really nice clean line and I'm glad I've done this because I was really happy with the end result. Right, now I've got a bit of a quandary stroke dilemma in the sense that I'm now pretty much getting ready for, for mounting the doors, uh, for hanging the doors. Now originally I got these things from the timber merchants, butt hinges, and and once I pick the you know once I pick the doors up, they're too small. So I w ordered these online. I got them from Amazon. I'll leave a link actually. They're quite more much more substantial. The issue I've got is I took the door off and I'll put a picture up now. The old doors, and all they were doing they were very shoddily done. They were just mounted to the frame. Um, and I've taken the measurements from the door from where I take, where I took them off. The problem I've got is with something like this. Um, what do I do in regards to, do I mount it flush against the wall, which I can't really do because I won't be able to do that accurately with just my one hand. And I'll also have to cut in a little bit of a recess. I think I might use my multi-tool just to cut into the door for the actual bit that comes down the side here. So what I'm thinking of doing is recessing this, the hinge, into the actual door itself. Now I've put up, made up a bit of a jig um, to sort of clamp to the clamp to the door, and then with my wherever it's gone, let me just find it for you. Back in a minute. With my little router, uh, just protruding out of the bottom of the jig is to cut the shape into the back of the door. And then, in theory, that will be flushed inside into the door there. And that might sort out my door hanging mounting solution. Otherwise, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. I kept this bit in the final edit because I'd actually already run the router through once, uh, but it was just a little bit shallow uh, for the hinge. So it's actually demonstrating how I change or adjust the route a bit with just uh, the one hand. It's um, I've got the little technique on the go and it worked okay. And I think you'll actually also notice that the little jig I made has grown quite substantially again i just added a couple of bits to the side it just made it more sturdy but also it gave just some extra space on the side to clamp it down so when i'm running the router now it just felt better really in a sense that it actually felt a little bit more felt more comfortable with it and uh, produced a better finish i just took my chisel just to tidy up the edges and really happy with the way that the hinge had fully recessed into the door frame into the door sorry
At this point it was back inside to the house to paint the door frame. Again using the same technique, I've got uh, Johnston's quick dry satin wood and using a paintbrush and then with a roller over the top. Now if you notice here I'm just attaching the hinges to the door itself. I clamped it down. Now I noticed a couple of other guys on YouTube using this uh, self-centered drill bit and it was absolutely brilliant. It just made things so much easier for me. So I'd use the clamp to uh, clamp it, uh, the hinge down to the door and then attach three of the fixings and to remove the clamp and then finally to attach the final fixing. Now, as I said before, I decided to make the decision to use my oscillating multi-tool just to cut a little recess into the door frame itself. So when I mount the hinge into the frame, it will actually sit nice and flush. Now it's actually time to hang the door, so I just put a piece of timber on the on the on the floor just to rest the door on, and um, which would allow me to actually line up the hinges correctly. And then I took uh, the self centering um, drill bit again, and just attached one fixing top and bottom, just to check everything was all right before finishing off and putting the other three fixings in the top and three fixings in the bottom as well. Almost getting towards the end now and if I ever do a, a video of outtakes I would actually show my original idea of how I was trying to um, mark a point for the doorknob using my square and uh, clamps and an unmitigated disaster it was so I decided, decided just to take the tape measure from the top down to the bottom mark and then use the second width of the tape measure to mark a spot which I just then drilled through with a, a four mil drill bit and then I actually drilled a little counter sink bit in the back before just uh, pushing the bolt through and attaching the doorknob. The actual magnets that were in the door frame, the original door frame, was still okay. So I just got these little cheap magnets off um, Amazon and attached them to the back of the door and that seemed to be fine. And the final step was to mount the piece of wood. I'd actually sanded some wood down, uh, but it wasn't in a great state from the old door frame. So I took my um, level, as you can see, as the spacer between the door and the door frame across the top. Just give it a little pencil line, and then just checked everything was okay and square. And I just took a countersunk drill bit in the middle. A little bit awkward trying to get the thing out but then just tried to apply one fixing just to get it the wood in place so it was actually pretty stable and then I done another bit in the middle and then I have two fixings on either end just to get everything nice and stable. And the final step after this obviously is just to cover up those holes with a little bit of filler which I'll sand over and then apply a little bit of paint over the top. And that's pretty much it. If you have enjoyed this video, uh, please give us a thumbs up, give us a little bit of feedback whether you enjoyed the voiceovers or you'd like to see the little pop-ups coming back. And don't forget maybe to check out our Facebook page and Instagram too which gives you little updates as these builds are going along. Take care and I will see you soon. Thank you.